Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So uh, today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be modeling this chair. Um, and what I like about this chair is it has some interesting kind of details that make it a little bit more difficult to model, but it's still relatively easy. So some of the more difficult features, of course, are the um, arched back on it here um, and the tapering and manipulation that needs to happen with the cylinders to be able to kind of create this uh, laved out look here. And then later on, we're going to get into actually making this mesh um, as a material using photographs of, of the mesh. So um, yeah, and then of course the threads as well, creating a, a uh, type of material that um, gives the illusion of all of this detail without actually having all the detail. So yeah, I, I have this chair, which means I'm gonna be measuring it from, um, from life while we're doing this. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. And I'm gonna start off with the back here and work my way around from there. So. Let's go ahead into Rhino here. Okay, here we are in Rhino and I am working in, um, my units here are inches. Okay, and my tolerances, I've set them pretty high here just so that uh, uh, I, I can make minute details, but it's probably a little too high actually. I'll just do 0 0.001. And so tolerances basically are, you know, how accurate the object is and the more, uh, the higher up you go on this, the more it uses your uh, your computer's you know processing capability. So if you got an older computer or something, keep it about 0 0.01, but I'm going to leave it at 0 0.001 for for my purposes here. Okay, so from a right view here, um, I'm going to start off with um, a cross section of <clears throat> of our of our object here. So I'm going to draw a rectangle. And I'm going to do 1.3, enter by 1.3, enter. And then I'm going to change this to the shape of the cross section. So I'm going to fillet, not fillet edge, just fillet, uh, with a radius of 0.25. That's fine. R, enter, 0.25, enter. And I'm going to do this corner. I'm going to do this corner. I'm going to do this corner. And then for this corner, I'm going to do a radius of... 1.25. Whoops, I mean, sorry, one. Radius of one. Okay, so that gives me the, kind of that arched out section here. All right, and then I need to find out what the span is from one side to the other. And that's about 20 inches. So I'm going to draw a line from about right here in the middle over 20 inches. OK. And then I'm going to mirror this from the midpoint straight up over. So I've got that section, too. Then what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this but I'm going to Alt or Option if you have a Mac and move it over. And then I'm going to go M, Enter to move it. And I'm going to find my midpoint here. And I'm going to find my midpoint here. OK. Then I'm going to go to a top view with it selected. And I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. OK, let's look at it in, whoop, let's look at it in perspective change to shaded so it's not all blown out on my screen here. Z enter S enter to zoom selected. Okay. Oops, am I upside down or <laughs> there we go. And then with this one, I actually want to change the scale of it. So I'm going to scale this whole thing up by holding down shift and clicking right there. And I'm going to go 1.25 just to make it a little bit bigger. Hmm, yeah, should be all right, I think. If not, I can always fix it later. And then how far back it's going to go is kind of dependent. I'm going to call it 12 inches. So then I'm going to move this back 12 inches. So negative 12. Okay. 
Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create a curve to, to, as a path here. So um, I'm going to put some points down. So I'm going to do a single point here, right there, and right on that mid knot area there, there, and there. And then I'm going to do another one um, on the midpoint on the top there. So mid, mid, and mid. Okay. And then I'm going to use, uh, if I right click on this, it's curve through points. And that's what I want. So right click. And then I'm going to select the points. So this one, this one, this one, enter. And then under degree, I'm going to click on that and I want to change it to nine. Enter, enter. And so now if I look at this, you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. And then I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to hit enter, brings up the same command. And then I can do control point here here, here, and then enter, enter, because it'll be nine again. So that gives me these two curves that are going to be my future paths. <laughs> but I want to click on them and kind of tweak them a little bit. So if I grab this control point, shift click on this one, shift click on this one, and shift click on this one, should be able to scale them out to kind of change the dynamics of that curve. And I might want to do it from a top view just to make sure I don't like go too far out of the realm of, you know, you don't want it to bend too far pa back past it. So I'm just kind of trying to make the arc of the back of the chair. Okay, that I think looks pretty good. All right, so let's do that same thing with this one now. Click on this control point and this control point, this one and this one and scale it out a little bit just to kind of give it that arc that we want and back to perspective here to make sure that it looks good so the one thing that you want to check here is to make sure that the curves are still grabbing right in the location that we want and you didn't change it too much there okay cool so this looks good delete this one out and this is the hardest part i think of the whole <laughs> of the whole operation here um, and then we're going to sweep too select this rail select this rail and then click on the cross sections i didn't hit enter or anything like that so you click on the two rails and then just click on the three cross sections in order hit enter enter and then we can look at it this way and i like to rebuild um, and refit within point zero one you know you can kind of change that at will to see how it looks all right and then you just hit um, OK. Does it look symmetrical? Hmm. Let's go to a top view and have a look here. It doesn't look quite symmetrical. Let's go back to, uh, let's undo that. Let's see what's going on. Looks like we've got some, a bit of weirdness somewhere so perhaps what we need to do is just make sure that uh let's see look it looks like the arc is continuing past right there so um what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and trim use this as a cutting object enter and those out that out delete that delete that all right and then what we're going to do after we trim that out is we're going to um, mirror this over. So select these two from the top view and go MI for mirror. Click right there and drag out from the control points. And then we're going to join these two lines or all of these lines, I should say, back together. And I'm going to rebuild both of them. And I'm going to keep them with 14. Hit OK. Cool. And then I'm going to go back to perspective so that I can check them out. Um, sometimes when we rebuild, we lose our contacts here. So let's see if we lost any contact. No. Okay. So it looks like it should be okay. Oops. I forgot to mirror that part over from right there over there. Okay. And then I actually want to go ahead and select all of this and I'm going to pull it out a little bit more just to kind of try to create a little better arc on the back here. 
Okay, let's see what it looks like. Mm, you know what? I'm going to also select this control point and this one. Kind of pull them a little bit more. Uh, yeah, you know, they're fine. Sweet, two. So click on this, click on this, cross section, cross section, cross section, enter twice. Re fit cross section, 0 0.01, okay. All right, looks good. Now I'm gonna cap this, okay. Poly surface is right there, really good. All right, and I'm gonna just move it away from those rails so I've got the rails separately. Zoom, enter, S, enter for zoom selected. And then I'm going to go ahead and use a new command called quad remesh, which is going to be used to convert this to a sub D object. So I'm going to click on convert to sub D right there, have my X symmetry on, and I'm going to use 150 um, target count here. And hit OK. And then I'll move this again. So we're looking at, mm, you know what? I might actually use less. So let's go ahead and quad remesh again. And I'm going to do, let's do 50 and see what happens. Okay. Because sometimes when it averages it, it makes it a little bit better looking. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and use this one. Let me isolate it, so just right click on the uh, under standard here, if you don't see that menu, right click there, and or click and hold, isolate, there it is. All right, so the next step is to go to my sub D tools panel up here and select my edge loops that I want to mess with. So I'm going to click on edges and double click there, Z enter, S enter, and you can see I've got that edge loop there. And what I want to do is actually, um, I want to change the scale of it. So, select edges, enter, okay. And if I shift and hold the scale tool, you can see I can scale it in and out, make it bubble up. Um, but, if I wanted to actually, um, I can also change the soft transform. So if I click up here and I start to move down where that ball surrounds, I can also modify. So now if I go shift and scale out here, you can see it bubbles up that back and that gives me more of that curvature that I want. I'm gonna do even more than that. So let me grab this edge loop again. So edge loop selection. Actually, you know what? Let's do this one. Edge loop selection here. Double click and we'll grab the whole loop. Okay. And then I want a soft transform to be bigger. Right about there. I don't want it to quite affect the ends there. And it has a fall off to it, so it should just... Yeah. Cool. That gives me that curvature of the back of the chair the way I want. All right, and then I want to modify these ends a little bit here, make them kind of taper in. So the way I'm going to do that is by creating symmetry. So up here, I'm going to do a sub uh, reflect, click on that, select the sub D to apply the reflection to, and then with my snap, I'm going to grab this center one, uh, center subdivision here, and click on it, and then hit enter. And you can see this area turned black or darker gray, I should say. And that means anything I do to one side, it will do to the other. So if I have my face filtration turned on here, if I grab just these, when I scale this in a little bit, it'll kind of scale in both sides at the same time. All right, so that's looking pretty good. You know, and I'm thinking like the back of this chair is still a little, a little too, too bulky, a little less there. All right, so 
I think that's that's close enough. Um, I'm also gonna kind of pull these in. So if I grab this, I might just pinch these in a little bit so it comes a little thinner. And turn my snaps off so I can do it a little better. More controlled there. And then I'm going to grab um, this edge, these edge right here, kind of pull it a little bit. Oh, let's turn off my soft transform way down. So it has a little bit of a ridge to it. Okay, let's look at it in rendered here. And why not look at the picture? Okay, maybe a little bit more edgy at the bottom, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can kind of gr do this like all day long, right? So I double clicked on that bottom edge there. Bring that forward a little bit. Perfect. All right, so that I think is going to give me my um, the back of my chair here. <laughs> yeah, you can get all caught up in the details for you know a long time here. Okay, once that's all done, if I right click on uh, my so, uh, my object uh, my reflection here, turn that off. Okay, cool. Okay, so now we've got our uh, back of our chair, which is, like I said, probably the more complicated thing. Now let's have some fun and do um, the uh, individual legs here. So let's go to a perspective view here. Um, and the leg heights, I've got my front two legs. which have a circle at the bottom of one inch. And at the top, I'm gonna go ahead and find my center here. Of two, okay. And then a height, 20 inches. So we'll move this second one up 20 inches. Okay. And it does have a little bit of a bow to it. So let's go, actually, you know what? Let's just loft it like this. So loft, enter, click here and here, enter, enter. Okay. And that gives me my first leg. And then I'm going to cap it. Okay. And then um, the second leg is just uh, separated by about 18 and a quarter inches away. So from the leading edge here. So I'll do a line. And then copy or mirror from the midpoint over. Okay, so that gives me my two legs. And then my back two legs are kind of baseball bat shaped. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to hit Alt or Option, copy this over. And then from a front view, I'm going to mirror this from here over to there. Okay, and then I'm going to Boolean Union these two objects together, go back to perspective here, and then we're going to go ahead and um, I'm going to explode this, remove the top here, 
in the bottom here. So I've got a sharp edge on both sides. And then I'm going to quad remesh these. And let's go ahead and preview. Hmm. That's right, I forgot to join them back together. Exploded. Join these two. Okay, now quad remesh, preview. And I can change the count here maybe to 10. And it does taper in quite a bit at 10. Uh, 20? Okay. Maybe 20 is okay. All right, so there's this. So this is a sub D object again. And just like what we were doing before, we can kind of play with the edge loops and stuff to be a little sculptural with it. So if I scale this section out here, you can see, ooh, we can have some fun there. But I want to make sure my fall off is pretty big. So I can kind of, ooh, well, mm, even bigger. Let's make the fall off the whole deal. Just a little shape to it. Okay, I think that looks good. All right, so then let's go ahead and turn this back into just a uh, standard NURBS object here. So, um, bum, 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 bum. Let's turn off our edge selection, click up there, click this, and then two NURBS. Enter, enter. Okay. And we can cap. Okay. So the back ones are how far from the front? About 17 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Alt or Option, click, negative 17. Okay. And then I'm actually interested in keeping these two the same shape. So if I go over here and then control shift click and grab this whoop. Uh, actually let's go ahead and just expand this. I don't care about that for right now. Let's then go to a right view and split this object, this object, enter, and delete that. Then I've got a leg, and I can get rid of these legs. I like the shape of these ones better. So I'm just making things from things and using a little artistic license here. Let me go to a front view here. And then from this front view, I'm going to find the midpoint here and draw back. 17 inches, click. It looks like I've actually got it kind of in the right spot. However, I'm sure from a top view, we've got to move.
Move from knot to knot, just line them right up. Okay. And then move this one. Negative 17. Okay, cool. Oops. And then let's cap you. Okay, capped. And delete. And then draw a line again from knot to knot. And then mirror these two over. From the midpoint, boom. All right. Then we got to figure out how tall these are. Twenty nine inches. Okay. So let's go back to front view. Draw a line straight up to the bottom here. Twenty nine. Enter. Click. Find that end of that line. Curve. Do another line from here to here, and then move it over this way, and then split this object. This object. Let's just go ahead and create a cutting line here. And I'm actually interested in seeing if I can just push this down. <laughs> yeah, because I like the shape of those. So if I scale them down maybe from a front view and then just scale them equally down. Doesn't change the thickness of them. I can kind of keep things. Yeah, all right, cool. So now I'm going to copy this down here. And scale it out so I can see the cutoffs here. So I'm going to split these two, enter with this one, enter. And then I'm going to split these two, enter with this one. So this is extra up on top, delete. And these two down here are extra on the bottom, delete. So that gives me a good shape on the top and the bottom. I like that. Okay. And back to perspective here. And then let's cap everything off because these bottom ones don't have bottoms on them anymore. Cap. Cool. All right. So those, those are our kind of cool little baseball shaped legs and they are rounded on the top, which I know we could probably do, but I'm not going to do that because that just adds unnecessary geometry. Okay, so the next step is to do crossbars and um, and uh, also uh, the, the seat. So, but let's go ahead and move this over here first. Move, grab that, we'll put it right there. Go to a top view and then kind of try to See how I can make these fit together. Okay, perspective. All right. Not quite perfect yet, but we are getting there. Okay. And then the legs do go at an angle. So let's go to a right view. And these two front legs. Do like, let's rotate them a little bit out. So I'm going to rotate five, negative three. How about that? Negative 
2.5. Just a little. And this one will do 2.5. Okay. And same with the back ones. Okay. okay, so then we've got these cylinders that go across here that are going to be representing kind of the thread part of the seat. And they're 17 inches from the front. So draw a line, I'll do a line between these two here, and then move it up, 17. Okay. And so those are going to be the front back cylinders, and then from the right, or from the front, sorry. Um, these ones are at 18. Actually, these ones are 16 and a half, so let's lower these down a half inch. That matters. Okay. Then the line from right here. Right here, and we'll move this up 18 inches. Okay. And then there's crossbars. Let's put those in too. Okay, and there's 13 at the front here. So Okay. We'll do Crossbars here are fifteen. Okay, and all this is on center too. So, all right, let's go to a right view. Or, sorry, my views are a little off, but that's okay. So, if I left to right select in here. Where are my... Select these, back to perspective. Oh, crap. <laughs> like, what is wrong with this? All right, so let's just draw lines to... Let me hide this. Okay. And I don't need these. Okay. And let's go ahead and um, I'm going to set my construction plane here to a world right. Where is my grid, by the way? This way over there. Let's go ahead and move everything. Let me bring everything back here. Move all this over to the zero point. So it's so I can see my grid. Okay. So now I've got the grid behind it, so that means I can draw my circle. On my near here, and it'll start coming this direction, and I want to do 
uh, diameter. Right? Let's see. Yeah, that'll work. Let's see, enter, S, enter. Okay. And then I want this to be in the mid, in the actual middle of this. So, uh, it's fine. I'll just extrude curve. And go to the knot. And then grab that extrusion. Edge here and pull this all the way to there. Let's get it lined up. So we just kind of go to a top view and we want it to line up. So let's see here. Perfect, like that. And then let's go ahead and draw a line from this point on the knot to this point on the knot, and then mirror it over. Okay, back to perspective, and let's look at it, make sure it's... Hmm. Let's do that one more time here. So move this over just a little bit. Okay, so that gives us those two. And then the next one we're going to do is we're going to switch from um, our view here. We're going to go to uh, front view. So world front. There we go. That changes our grid that way. And now we can draw a circle. Here. And we'll do same radius. Enter. Okay. And then we'll go extrude. Okay. Okay. Good, good. And then we need to also draw a rectangle. And then just enter, enter, enter. Nope. That's it. Center. 0.25, enter, 1.25, enter. Oops, I think I did a little different before. Point 0.5, enter, 1.25, enter. And then screwed both sides I did this time so and I'll just get it to go right and then we need these to line up in the middle here Okay, so here we are, <clears throat> and we've now got our objects pretty much where I want them to be. I think, actually, I'm going to raise these up a little bit more, just to right about there. 
Okay, so it looks pretty good. Let's look at it in rendered here. Um, and let's look at the original. Okay, looks pretty good. So the next step to do is to start to kind of create this pattern of, um, of how we're going to join it together, right? So we can see that these little areas are not quite right here. I'll pull this forward some, and we want to make sure that it does overlap front and back. So maybe I've got to kind of change the scale a little bit, just figure out a way to get it to fit. Okay, let's look at it rendered one more time. Perfect. Okay. So now that everything is lined up, uh, we'll start Boolean unioning some of the stuff together. So let's do that. Boolean union. Okay. And then anything wood, we're going to kind of Boolean together. And you want to make sure everything is in its right spot before you do this because you can't undo it. Okay, so boom, all the woods on one piece. These cylinders are going to stay separate, though. Um, but kind of the easiest way to get rid of anything unwanted is, is just to go ahead and Boolean union them and explode them and then separate them again. So Boolean union. Okay, so that's all one piece. And then I'm going to explode. And I'm going to then put these cylinders, join them together, and then put them on a different layer. And I'll call this layer uh, thread, change object layer. Okay. If I look at it in shaded, you'll see those are on a different layer. And all of this is wood. Oh. I gotta rejoin. So let me hide my thread layer and join. Okay, so now this whole thing is all one piece. Call it wood, change object layer. Cool. And let's bring back our thread layer. All right. And then the last thing I gotta do is create a seat. So uh, the seat is kind of an interesting thing because it goes around the top. And it has like this weird kind of curvature to it. So it's going to be a little complicated. And let's do that from a front view. Front view. Okay. So I'm going to draw a line or an arc, actually. Let's do it kind of arcy. From the top to the top and keep going with a few points along the way all right switch back to perspective here mm. did not go the way I wanted it to dang it It's because I had my snaps on. Disable them. Go back to a front again. Do it again. And this time, we're not going to be perfectly on, but with ortho off, I can hit shift. Mm, you know what? I don't want it to go all the way up. Now it should be all, yeah, straight. And then let's just extrude it across. And 
And then I'm going to pull it in a little bit so it's like overlapping about the same on both sides. And then pull it this way a little bit so it's not overlapping too much. Okay. And then, since it's a surface, I can rebuild and give it some control points. Okay. And then I'll do points on and grab a couple of them and just kind of play with it so it feels a little bit more organic. So grab some surface points and then I'm going to kind of push down so it feels like it's giving under the weight of itself. Like maybe it's been sat on a couple of times. Okay, so that feels about right. And I'm going to now call this one Mesh Thread Change Object Layer. Okay, so it's looking good. I've got everything on different layers. Let's go ahead and set our control plane back to the top. Let's look at it in rendered here. Okay, I think that's about how we want it to look at this point. So we're ready to uh, change our units and play with it in um, in the Blender program. So file, let's go ahead and go to properties and change our units to feet and then hit okay. Yes. All right. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and export our FBX here. File. Actually, you know what? I'm going to rename each one of these two. I've got, like, some of them are capitalized. Some of them aren't. I'm going to call it kit chair underscore thread. Kit chair underscore mesh. Fit chair underscore wood. And then I'm going to select these three layers. And then I'm going to go ahead and say file, export selected. And I'm going to do with origin this time because I want to actually create a spot that it grabs onto so I know where it's going to come in. Okay. And then <clears throat> I'll put it in my chair folder. And call it, you guessed it, kit chair. And I'm going to save it as a FBX. Save. And then just hit OK. And I'm going to save this as desktop chair. There we go. Save this as a 3DM. OK. Cool. So we're ready to start playing with some materials and stuff. And this is going to be a, another fun segment. Um, and we'll start off in, um, in Blender with uh, some Photoshopping and whatnot in the next segment.